Thank you. Enzymes are the protein molecules in your bodies that regulate every single vital function. They act as these small molecular robots that do a certain kind of job. Every time you have a coffee, you have this enzymatic chain reaction starting that gives you this sudden burst of energy. Controlling enzymes would mean that you could do anything, curing cancer and AIDS, and even wrinkles. <laughs> so, what are uh, enzymes really like? Imagine that you're holding this great big juicy apple. You take the first bite and, oh my god, you suddenly see there is a gummy worm inside. Now this doesn't work as better as I thought. So, <laughs> there is a gummy worm inside. Sorry about that. So, it is right in this very moment that you're holding the images of an enzyme in a substrate molecule. So, see how they fit perfectly. Now, that's what we call the recognition process. And now the enzyme can work its magic, like splitting the molecule into two, like so. That's exactly what your digestive enzymes are doing right now. You see, this fitting process resembles the way that two people match each other. There are enzymes that would bind only to molecules that have blue eyes, black hair, exactly five foot six, no more, no less. <laughs> and then there are those that are more promiscuous than that and would bind even to molecules that have a pirate patch, a wooden leg, and maybe even some teeth missing. <laughs> Knowing an enzyme's preferences is what helps us develop new drugs for old diseases. But how do we know all that? Now, I would like to bust a myth about us chemists, because people believe that we have these huge microscopes that we use to see molecules. There is no such thing, and there isn't a person alive on this planet that has seen a molecule. What do we do when we need to read the fine print in a contract? Well, obviously, we need more light. The thing is that in order to see something as small as a molecule, we'll need a huge amount of light that will just vaporize the molecule in a snap, just like that. That's why we have to come up with some other clever techniques to explore the fabulous world of molecules. And that's exactly what we do in our lab back in Bulgaria. We use a glowing molecule to spy on enzymes. Kind of like the one that fireflies use to attract the opposite sex. Only prettier, okay? I mean, like, duh! It is the glow's intensity that tells us what it does, how often it does the things it does, and how does it feel about that? Now, that's what the beauty of science is all about. Seeing the unseen, doing the impossible, and always expecting the unexpected. And remember that the only thing worse than seeing an actual worm in your apple is seeing half an actual worm in your apple. <laughs>Okay, so you cannot actually see a molecule, but you can uh, define its structure using X-ray diffraction or NMR spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. So basically, X-ray diffraction is having you, uh, some molecules arranged just like little soldiers, and then you diffract the X-ray through it, and you get this pattern on some kind of a screen that has nothing to do with what the molecule looks like. It's uh, it takes some computing and some uh, sophisticated math to turn this image into this image that we can see in uh, mm -hmm. textbooks in biology and chemistry and maybe some other mm -hmm. textbooks. So really, you can't see a molecule. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Christo, can I just ask, what would you like to be doing in five or ten years' time? What's the ideal job for you? Well, it's very difficult for me to answer, but I do have some interest in biochemistry, and that's what I'm working right now, although I have this patent that is in the field of uh, semiconductor science, uh, but uh, I imagine myself as working as a biochemist rather than a uh, material scientist. It's, uh, it's something. Great. Put your hands together for Christo. Oh,